President Trump has made economic growth a priority, and Senator David Perdue, Republican of Georgia, has been a strong supporter of the president on this strategy, speaking with an authority really that's unique in Congress because he is the only former Fortune 500 CEO serving on the Hill. We welcome Senator Perdue back to the program now, joining us from the Russell Rotunda up on Capitol Hill. Welcome back, Senator. Good to have you here. Good morning, Eddie. So I want to talk about growth and taxes and for that much better trade. But you were in a meeting yesterday at the White House on immigration. We have got to watch an awful lot of it because it was on camera. Where are we on this? Can we come to terms? Can Democrats and Republicans come together and keep the government open and deal with immigration all at the same time? Well, keeping the government open is a separate issue. shouldn't be confused with the immigration issue. But yesterday, I was part of that meeting in the White House, as, as, as the world saw it. The president accomplished two things yesterday. He brought a very diverse group of people from Congress together to address this immigration issue. And we agreed on the scope, and the president brought a sense of urgency to a very complicated topic. But we agreed to focus on the DACA situation, bring border security in the wall right now, because we've got to have security on our southern border, and also to eliminate chain migration and to eliminate this archaic diversity visa lottery. So the, the president went a long way yesterday to bring a diverse group of people together to bring focus and a sense of urgency to get this thing done. And, and Senator, there seems to be widespread agreement. We heard Dick Durbin actually from the Democrat side yesterday saying absolutely we want security on our southern border. At the same time, yeah. in a broader sense, as a former CEO, you know economic growth is driven by productivity and increased numbers of workers. We have actually a declining exactly. workforce in terms of the number of people, our demographics. Don't we in the longer term, as a matter of business, want to encourage immigration? Well, that's why this is such an important issue. It's not just a political or a social issue. It's an economic issue, David. Right now, the people who are determining future immigrants are current immigrants. And what that has done is brought in low-wage, low-skill workers for the most part. And what we're recommending, actually, is a merit-based system that actually gives us an opportunity to choose who the future immigrants are going to be while being sensitive to the family structure. But what we've got right now is, I think, a confluence of interest, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side, to solve the DACA issue. Issue, bring security to our borders, and once and for all, solve the real cause, uh, the causes of some of these problems that we have to deal with every 20 or 30 years. So as, as you and I have talked about before, when you talk about growth, taxes were an important component of it. And, and you all, the Republicans, had a major victory in December with the substantial yeah. tax overhaul. I'm sure you expect real growth to come from that. What are you expecting? Well, we're already seeing growth, David. I mean, the president said job one this in 2017 was growing the economy, and he focused on three things, the regulatory work, and we've reversed 860 rules and regulations last year. The second thing was energy. We opened ANWR. We did the, the waters of the U.S., the clean power plan. And the third thing was tax. And so the president accomplished all three of those facets that he deemed important to grow the economy. We've had two quarters of 3% growth. We're about to have a third, in my opinion. And now that we've got tax in, uh, in play, we're going to see a continuation of that, I believe, in 2018. So the president's gone a long way to get us jump-started to growing this economy. But trade now is the next step that we've got to focus on to give us access to foreign markets to continue to grow our exports if we want to continue to see 3 4 percent GDP growth. Well, exactly, and that's what I'm hearing certainly here in Washington, an increased concern about where we're headed with trade, and specifically NAFTA, because we have these negotiations that are coming up later this month. When you were a CEO of Dollar General, it was important for your business that there be trade across borders. How concerned are you right now that we may pull out of NAFTA? Well, of course trade is important to our economy. We've been a, a country of traders since our inception, and the president knows that. But I compare NAFTA to what happened in NATO, uh, David. If you look at the president's comments on NATO during the campaign two years ago, he said we're going to pull out of NATO unless they start carrying their own weight in terms of their self-defense. And guess what? He accomplished his goal without having to back up out of NATO. In terms of NAFTA, the president said the same thing. We want equal access. There are things that are, are problematic with regard to the NAFTA agreement. They can be solved, and I think the president now is focused on that, and I know his administration wants to do that. But what we have to have is a level playing field. The president wants equal access to all these markets. Look, one of the measures of that, David, is our own uh, poverty rate in the United States hasn't changed since the Great Society and the war on poverty was instigated in the mid-60s, and yet global severe poverty is down 60 percent. That's because of the trade laws that we've had. Uh, but from your briefings, from, from your talking with the White House, with the administration, what degree of confidence do you have that in fact this will come out well with NAFTA? Because increasingly we hear that actually there may be a showdown in Montreal and it may all blow up. Well, that's possible. 
and I think the president, everybody needs to be aware, this president's willing to take the risk to stand up for American interests. That's all he's doing. I applaud that, frankly. This is the first president in a long time that said, look, the rest of the world, we know what's important to them because they've been telling us that for 30 years. It's high time that we tell the rest of the world what's important for American workers and American businesses, and that's what's happening right now. And finally, Senator, just take a step back for a moment. Again, as a former CEO, to what extent are you concerned about the long-term debt for the United States and the effect that could have on interest rates and therefore on businesses like the ones you ran? David, we don't have enough time to tell you all I think about the debt. We are in a crisis right now. General Mattis and others have said that, the, that our national debt is the greatest threat to national security. We've had five increases in the Fed fund rate just in the last 15 months. And what's worse than that, in the last eight years in the past administration, David, uh, in, when interest rates were fundamentally zero, they didn't go long in our bond portfolio. The, our debt portfolio, $20 trillion, the duration of that debt portfolio is under three years, David. So this is going to come rolling on our backs. Look, if interest rates were at their 30-year average of about 5%, we'd be paying a trillion dollars a year in interest. That just isn't going to happen on a $4 trillion budget. So we're in a crisis mode. We've got to deal with that. Job one, the president has said, is growing the economy. We're well into that effort. But now we have to start working on some of the other more difficult issues to get at this debt crisis. It sounds like there's a lot more in your agenda. So, Senator David yes, Perdue, sir. thank you so much. Always great to talk to you. That's Senator David Perdue, Republican of Georgia.